everyone. Welcome. My name is Lucia Radetsky. I'm a Christian health coach, sharing the word of God with you and some reflections. So the Lord was sharing with me about the importance of understanding the act of um, disowning parts of yourself, or to be more specific, the old self, in order to achieve the, the divine plan that he has for you. You see, there is a part of you that is greatly identified with your ego, with your trauma, with your pain, with everything that you used to be, with the things that you used to like. Maybe this has to do with the way how you perceive relationships, with the way how you perceive success, jobs, careers, and all of those things that were your old identity before you came to Christ. And so all of those things have a lot to do with your ego and mostly are making so you idolize yourself. So what I mean with this is that you will put um, as a, in a pedestal the, the old self, what you thought it was good for you because it was what make you feel comfort, what make you feel seen or loved instead of following the path that God has for you to become the person he wants you to be. Now, there is a big difference between um, denying yourself and neglecting yourself, okay? Because those are different things. The Lord doesn't want you to go um, about your day without thinking in your food, your shelter, even your emotional needs. That's not what it means to deny yourself. To deny yourself have to do with denying desires of the flesh that ultimately you know that in that are not in alignment with what He wants for you, with the 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 true new human that he wants you to embody because the person he wants you to be, which has high morals, high standards, it is not a neglectful person that will not take care of herself or himself or someone else. Quite the opposite. It's a person that through the love of Christ is going to be able to do all things and is going to be able to help other people, put other people first without without, and this is important to understand, people pleasing, but coming from a place of love and boundaries. Why? Because the Lord say, love your neighbors as yourself, which means that if you don't know how to love yourself, you cannot love your neighbors. Now, here's the thing. When he asks you to deny yourself, to disown yourself, he's asking about your ego, your trauma, your pain, and all of those things that you may do to fulfill those empty spaces that he wants to fill in you. So, for example, if you had, um, you know, an addiction to a substance or even to pornography or even to um, kind of relationships or you have an addiction to food or, or to uh, TV, whatever it is that you have been addicted to or idolizing, whether you realize or not, that is your former self. That is not what he wants because he wants you to be free of all addictions, no matter what th those are. And those can be also strongholds like um, feelings of um, rejection or trauma or, you know, generational curses also. So all of those things belong to the former self, the one that, the one that is not free. But here's the thing. He has said, whoever this son says free is free indeed. So he doesn't want you to carry that old self all around. What he wants is that you take upon your cross and follow him, which means what? That you understand that now he's going to fill those empty spaces where before you needed a person or, or a certain identity. I don't know, maybe you were punk or you were, uh, you know, whatever it is that you had before in your life. I'm just saying things, right? Maybe you identify yourself as a, a rich, successful um, entrepreneur, right? And the Lord is asking you to let go of them, some things. Then those are not to harm you, but to prosper you because he has something better for you. And this can take different forms for every person. Like maybe he's asking you to leave behind a way of identifying with your trauma or leave behind a way of identifying with um, a gender. You know, whatever it is that he's asking you to do, he's asking you that because he knows you better. He has plans to prosper you and not to harm you. By you taking up on your cross, you're saying, Lord, I put in the altar, I'll sacrifice this part of me 
Uh, for example, for those people that come from being um, polyamorous or queer or people that come from being, you know, addicted to a substance or, or um, you know, they're, they're, the need to do a diet because they have been eating and drinking a lot and or people who are coming from negative thinking and gossiping and all that. And, you know, somehow that addiction that can be even to football, you know, has brought them some comfort. And there's a moment when the Lord is going to say, deny yourself, disown that part of you and let it behind, crucify that in a way of giving you the power, the authority and the dominion over that bad habit because you may not realize, but that is robbing you. That is depriving you from the more, more, um, the more beautiful, I guess, is the word, the more sanctified version of yourself, the more successful, the more loved, and, and the more fulfilled. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That is the word, the more fulfilled version of yourself. The version of yourself that truly loves yourself can only get into that point of loving you to love the neighbor after you understand that you love anyone and yourself because he loved you first. So if you truly want to love yourself, you got to start from loving God. And you got to start from placing at the altar of sacrifice the old self and saying, okay, I don't, I don't do this anymore. I won't do it anymore because it's not in alignment with what you want me to be. If you call me to marriage, then why I'm like wandering here? Or if you call me to to be measuring my, my tongue, measuring what I eat, uh, why I am struggling with, um, you know, a food compulsion or why I'm struggling with this addiction to tobacco or alcohol or whatever it is, right? Even a person. So the Lord wants you to, to be free of all that. And so he's asking you to deny yourself and to, and to follow him, not out of a place of neglecting yourself, but out of a place of freedom and out of a place of truly being who he wants you to be. So in order for you to be able to build a, a more humble you that can work humbly with God and that is teachable and that is being molded, you know, he's the potter and we are the clay, then allow yourself to be transformed and renew in your mind and in your heart by, by what he wants you to be. Because what he wants you to be, even though you may not realize, it's actually going to give you even more happiness, peace, joy, the self-control, the patience that you need. Okay? So ask the Lord that he helps you to, to really embrace this. Let me read you this Today, Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. Then Jesus said to his disciples, disciples, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what profit it is to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will, man, will a man give in exchange for his soul? For the Son of Man will come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he will reward each according to his works. So it's very much part of our growth in Christ. Those moments, and there are going to be more than one, when the Lord is going to say, you got to sacrifice that. you got to deny that. you got to crucify that habit. you got to crucify that behavior, that way of thinking, that feeling. And if you're having a hard time doing this, ask him for help. He's pleased to help you. And if you delight in him and you understand that his ways are always greater because his thoughts are greater than our thoughts, then he's going to give you the desire of your heart. He knows what you need to be happy. He knows you better than you know yourself. So he is going to give you what you need and what you want as far as you trust him that he knows better what you need and what you want. It's tricky, but it's how it works because we may deceive ourselves sometimes. We may think that we want something and it's not true. Or we may want something out of um, spitefulness, out of a feeling of rejection, out of trauma. Maybe we are neglecting a part of ourselves and that brings us to believe that we want something or we need something and that's not what we actually need or want 
So we need to trust him that he is a good father that gives good gifts to his children. And he wants you today to place in the altar of sacrifice that thing that you thought it was part of you and you had it like, oh, you were holding on tight, like, no, this is part of me. This makes me free. This gives me so much, you know, good feeling and self-esteem. And he says, no, your self-esteem cannot be based on that toxic habit. Your self-esteem cannot be based on how many people are giving you a like. Your self-esteem cannot be placed into how many people are um, loving you or obeying you or doing whatever. It cannot be in your career. It cannot be in your spouse. It cannot be in your aspect. All of those things are futile. All of those things will pass. They pass away. But the word of the Lord will not pass. Your soul is eternal. You are dead to the former self and alive in Christ. And that's a good thing. Now, for those of you who are in um, waiting for a marriage for a, a spouse, then it, it, the more you do this, that you truly disown this old part of yourself and you say, this old self is not me anymore. This is not me. I don't identify with this way of thinking, with this way of doing. The more the Lord is going to also take away all counterfeits from the middle of you too, because whatever he has united in heaven, no man or woman can divide. And the more that you both are going to find each other on that place, on that place of obedience. When you both deny the old self, what happens is that you both find each other through God, in the true self, in the self that is inside the soul. All of that other self that you are putting to rest, that old self that you are denying, that you are disowning, it's not and it was never you in the first place. Because who you really are is who the Lord has created you to be. So the more that you come closer to that and sacrifice the aspects of you that give you security, which is a temporary security, in order for you to follow what he's asking you to follow, to be a godly husband, a godly wife, a godly parent, the more that you let him take away all of those layers of trauma, of pain, of anger, addictions, all of those things, the more you're going to become a person that is worthy of the blessing he wants to give you. Because you have proven that you are not walking in your ego. You are surrendering to Christ. You are surrendering to the humility that you need to do the necessary changes. And you know, you can repent as many times as you want, but repentance without change will not bring the things that you want to see manifested in your life. The only door the narrow gate is Christ, and he has let us know already what is the roadmap. The roadmap is to let behind the former self. We cannot be the same person. Whoever comes to Christ and has not let his mother, his father, his friends, what it means, it doesn't mean that you're going to abandon your family. It doesn't mean that you're going to, to reject people. No, it's not that. It means that you are going to abandon ways of thinking, ways of being, your, your generational trauma, generational curses, all of those things you no longer are. Now you are a new creation in Christ and you can love your parents. You can love your children. You can still build connection, love with people. You're not abandoning anyone or hating or rejecting anyone, but you love them from this place of being a new creation that is walking towards humility every day more and walking towards truly getting into that reconciliation with God from a place of authenticity. For your authentic self, the one that you really are, has no masks, has no ego, has no need to, to, to be anything that you aren't. And those things that you believe you are and that you're doing right now that are getting you a slave of an habit or something that makes you sad, that brings you depression, that brings you down, negative thinking, all of those things, they're not who you are. All of that identity that you have placed that belongs to the world, that makes you feel safe because you kind of like adjust and fit in the world, they are not who you are. That's a deception. 
you are deceiving yourself. You're lying to yourself. It's self-sabotage and deception that you remain in that place. So you got to get rid of those things of the world that has made your identity. Okay? The Lord will resignify. It doesn't mean that he won't use your talents. He's going to use your gifts. He's going to use your talents. It doesn't mean that your desires of your heart, the ones who are in alignment with Christ, will not come to pass. If they are in alignment with Christ, like, for example, marriage is part of his desire for you. Abundance is part of his desire. There are many things that people want, health, for example, that are in alignment with what Christ wants for you. So don't think that you're never going to get those things because you are denying yourself quite the opposite you will get to those things close um easier because now we are walking with him you're surrendering to him and you're saying lord i don't i no longer need this for my security because my security is in you you are my stronghold you are my rock my self-esteem comes from you because you have said i'm royalty in your eyes you have said i'm your daughter or your son you have said i am who you say i am a chosen people Okay, so I hope this helped you understand and clarify this concept of denying yourself. It's a beautiful thing. It's not a hard thing, really, or it may be hard, but it's beautiful, though. And and think about this. It, it, thank you, Holy Spirit. It reminds me to the story of Isaac and, and the moment of the sacrifice when, when the Lord is asking Abraham to sacrifice his son. And so in this moment where, you know, getting into that place of, okay, I have to sacrifice this. And this is so there for me. I don't want to do it, right? But he does it anyway because he trusts God, that God is good and God is going to bring you something amazing. So he trusted so much. He had faith, so much faith that he did it. He said, okay, this that I love so much. This was my promise, my blessing, what I pray for forever. And now you're asking me to get rid of that ego, that pride that I got because I got this awesome kid, career, title, whatever, um, partner, right? Uh, you're asking me to, to let it go? All right, God, I'll do it because I trust you. And when he did that, <laughs> what does the Lord? The Lord changes and not only blesses that family with the redemption of Isaac and, of course, all of the, you know, they coming to be a blessing for many generations, thousand years later, but also... He blesses humanity because he gave us a prophecy about the Lamb of God, which is Jesus Christ. And so with that story that we see in the Old Testament, we start understanding the divine plan of God to get us to that point when we are like, oh my goodness, I got to sacrifice all this and I'm going to lose everything that I am and my identity and what I love and what makes me me. And, you know, yeah, you put it in the altar of sacrifice because the Lord it's going to do something great with it. Not just for you, mm -mm. but also for many generations after you. So I pray in Jesus' name today that you have the courage and the strength to deny those parts of yourself that do not longer have to do with who you are in Christ. I pray in the name of Jesus that you do this with love, with 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 that faith that Abraham had in God, that God will bring you who you really are, your authentic self, and that he will bring together in your life all of the things that he has created you to be and to do. In Jesus' name, I pray for you. Amen and amen. Bye.